Tonight, Steve Bigelow of Candlestick Forum. I'm Lex, and this is Options Brew TV. Hey, Options Brew TV with Steve Bigelow from CandlestickForum.com. Steve, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for the invite. You bet. You bet. Anytime. So, Steve, I know I, we talked about this pre-show. You and I actually met maybe three years ago at, at, at a summit um, a while. So I know a little bit about what you're doing, but, you know, let's let the folks hear it from you. You're the expert. So tell us a little bit about your background, um, what you're doing now, Candlestick Forum. Give, give us the, the overview real quick. Well, I've been investing for over 40 years. Uh, I was a stockbroker for eight years in Houston, Texas, and got out of the business because I found out the brokerage firms had no more idea about what made prices go up or down than anybody. So I got out of the business and I eventually came, somebody put candlesticks on my desk and they said, you're a stockbroker, take a look at this. And I, I thought, candlesticks, that's, that's so unsophisticated. I'm not even going to take the time and effort to look at them. But they kept badgering me. And when I started looking at the candlestick signals, I said, this makes sense. And the whole thing that kept whacking me in the side of the head as I started analyzing was mm -hmm. it was just common sense put into a graphic depiction. So I started using them about 30 years ago. Now, I started off as the worst investor in the world. And when I started using candlesticks, all of a sudden my investing turned around and it basically took all my emotions out of my trading. So I've been using candlesticks for over 30 years. We set up the website over 20 years ago and we basically just teach people how to use the common sense aspects built into candlestick analysis. Oh, that's terrific. So, so, and, and, and it, can, can the, your method be used for options trading and stock trading, or is it just more towards stock trading? How would you describe that? Candlestick analysis is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during mm -hmm. a specific time frame. Mm -hmm. Stocks, bonds, currencies, futures, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed. <laughs> so using it for stock, you're just analyzing what the underlying trading entity is doing. And then you, if you're trading options, you figure which is the best trading uh, strategy for that, that price move or that uh, chart pattern. Great. Okay, good, good. And I, from what I understand, you're going to show us some, uh, some things on the screen, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's a, that's a heck of a background. I mean, there's a lot of experience there, a lot of years of, uh, of understanding this stuff. And you're, you're self-taught is what I'm getting. You, you study these candlesticks on your own or did someone teach you? Uh, no, I started 30 years ago plus. There was no information out there. <laughs> so I, I came across uh, antiquated information, um, then read a couple books on it. But it was basically just doing studying the charts and figuring out where the signals were occurring sure. and what improved the probabilities of making those uh, reversal signals work. Got it. So, okay, good. Well, let's see it. Go ahead. You know how to share the screen. I think what's, I see candlestick trading simple right in the middle. That's yep. the one. That's why I, I, this is why I illustrate to everybody that when I first started learning candlesticks, that was just about when the chat rooms were starting on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I would ask people, why isn't everybody using candlestick analysis? It's so easy. And they said, well, there are too many of them and they didn't always work. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them three and 400 years later after the Japanese rice traders developed it. So what I found out that it was just common sense put into a graphic depiction. Mm -hmm. So there are 12 major signals. And I discovered that out of the uh, 50 or 60 candlestick signals, mm -hmm. you only needed to know 12. And the reason that it came up with that number was that as I would research, go back through uh, uh, history of, the, of charts or the chart history of a trading entity, these were the ones that would come up all the time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, and not only come up all the time, but they were the ones that produced the uh, major reversals. So basically a candlestick chart is just the graphic depiction of human nature. And the Japanese rice traders illustrated where do most people buy? Mm 
-hmm. They buy exuberantly at the top, which I knew because that's usually where I was buying. Where do most people sell? They usually panic sell at the (laughs) bottom. And everybody says, how do you grab for a fallen knife? Well, the candlestick signals tell you when the selling has stopped and the buying has started. So you can use this for analyzing the market trend. Now, as you can see in the Dow, just over the last week or so, mm-hmm. this is what this is one of the 12 major signals. It's called the shooting star. It looks like a shooting star. Mm-hmm. And it's closed back below the T-line. Now, I use stochastics of 12.33. Okay. So very simple logic from the, candle, or from the Japanese rice traders. Mm-hmm. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the oversold condition, I'm sorry, the overbought condition, Mm -hmm. logic says there's probably a change of investor sentiment. Okay. Can I ask a question, Steve? Certainly. The stochastic 12.33, what what does the 12.3 and 3 refer to? Is that, you know, again, I'm playing playing dumb, which I am uh, relative to this, but so tell me what that means. I think that's just the time frame and... I don't okay. know what the three three stands for. Okay, but that's your that's your that's the one that you, obviously you can change those numbers. But you like this setup, the twelve three three. About thirty years ago, I sat in in front of a screen where they were just starting to put candlesticks on the uh, internet. Yep. And I thought, well, I'm a swing trader, so my trades last anywhere from two to ten trading days. Okay. And at that time, the standard was like fourteen five five, and I said I need something quicker, so I just spent an evening. Okay, let's try 1432, 1255, 1233. 1233 mm-hmm. seemed to correlate sure. that when it was overbought, that's when the signal occurred. When it was oversold, that's when the signal occurred. And those red and blue lines in that stochastic, that must have something to do with that 12, 3, and 3, right? When they right. One's a, one's a uh, percent K, one's mm-hmm. percent D. Mm-hmm. And don't even ask me what that means. You just know how to read it, right? Just need to know that it's in the overbought condition looking for a sell signal. Got it. Okay. And that's a shooting star signal. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. So, and then it's closed back below the T-line, which is an extremely high probability factor, which I'll get to here in a second. Okay. But if we can see a sell signal in the Dow, and at the same time, start seeing sell signals in the NASDAQ, and you can see what the NASDAQ did today. Mm Mm-hmm. When that was what we call bearish kicker signal, which is one of your strongest uh, reversal signals. Okay. It, it opens here, closes here. The next day they open it at the previous day's open, go the opposite direction. That tells you the investor sentiment has been kicked in the opposite direction. Okay. A very strong, in this case, sell signal. Then you can see what happened. We've got the graphic advantage to see what everybody else is watching. What is it gonna do here at the 50 day moving average? Well, it failed because it did another bearish signal. This is called a bearish engulfing signal, okay. um, which told us they weren't going up through the 50. They're heading back down. Mm-hmm. So here's the kind of the common sense analysis. If you can analyze which way the market in general is going, and then you've got the capability of analyzing which sectors have the strongest bullish sector or bearish sector, mm-hmm. and then you can go to that sector and find the strongest candlestick signal patterns you're basically putting all the stars in alignment got it so with that we can identify the patterns this is what we call a cradle pattern the headboard the the uh, indecisive bed Mm -hmm. and the footboard we know what the expected result is Mm -hmm. a slingshot effect like this and how long do we stay long on this as long as we stay above the t-line so here's my important uh indication or confirming indicator okay it's the t-line which is the eight exponential moving average and this is the most important statement i usually make when i'm showing somebody candlesticks okay the t-line acts has, or like has fibonacci characteristics mm-hmm. it acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature so if you've got the candlestick signals which are the graphic depiction of investor sentiment and you apply that or apply the T-line to that analysis, that combination gives you an extremely strong trading platform to tell you if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Okay, it's not a, let me, let me clarify. It's not a, 
a cross of the T line intraday with the low of the day. It's a it's a close below that T line. Is, is that is that the fact? exactly? And I probably skipped one step for people that aren't familiar with candlestick signals. Mm -hmm. A signal is created where a bullish signal or a white candle mm -hmm. is where it opens here and closes above where it opens. Okay. A bearish candle is a dark candle. It opens here and closes below where it opens. Great. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the price will be up or down on the day because you could have a gap up and a red candle and it's still trading much higher. Mm -hmm. But the information that is built into a daily or into a candlestick signal tells you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment, no matter where it's occurring in the trend. Got it. So the same scenario over here. If you see a candlestick sell signal, this is called an evening star signal, a, a strong reversal signal. Mm -hmm. You can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T line. Got it. Okay. Let me just ask a question again, just for go ahead. Okay. Back to the evening star. I know you haven't drawn. I'm gonna draw myself. So that that evening star that you're saying because this part of the candle closed beneath the T line, that's when we're interested in this. It's saying maybe there's a bearish sentiment coming. Yes? Correct. Okay. Yes. And then the, the the way out is a is a close above that T line along the way, and you pointed to it at the very end and the morning star. Is that correct? Right. So you okay. can see there's a bullish signal right here. Yep. A bullish engulfing signal, but they couldn't close it back up above the T line. It was I over it. here where they had kind of a morning star signal and a close above the T line that told you there's now a definite change of investor sentiment. Got it. Does that ever, does that ever a signal them when it closes above to go the other way to, you know, you're, you're short, you cover, go long or no, no that you don't do that. Well, you can, mm -hmm. but just because something goes long or reverses mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean it's time to buy. There might be stronger situations out there. Got it. Same thing over here, just because it did sell signals might not necessarily mean it's time to sell unless it's really confirmed. Okay. Understood. Now there's a caveat to the T line. Very simple. The further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So as we can, we saw in Tesla mm -hmm. a couple months back, we use this as an illustration. You can see how it was pretty choppy all the way up. But then where we use the Japanese rice traders uh, professing that says, where do most people buy? They start buying exuberantly at the top. Mm -hmm. Look how far away we are from the T line. Right. Now, how would we know to take profits up here versus down here? Uh, that would have been a huge uh, loss of profitability. Sure. We got a simple strategy. When it's up here and we know it's too far away from the T line, we just flip to our 10 minute chart. And as soon as the 10 minute chart, which will look at exactly the same as this chart, mm -hmm. starts trading back below the T line, then we take profits up here because the probabilities are they're going to start selling from that point. Okay. Is this this what is this the daily chart we're looking at now? This is daily. Okay. But, um, this could be a one minute chart, a five minute chart, 10 minute chart, hourly, other than you wouldn't see the gaps sure. uh, in those. But they work, they look exactly the same. Um, okay. The same criteria, the T line is our support level. The stochastics are the same mm -hmm. and our other moving averages, which is usually the 50, which is the blue line. And then mm -hmm. there are the red line when you see it is the 200. Okay. And the reason we have those on our charts is because every major money manager around the world uses the 50 and the 200 to make decisions sure. about their portfolio we have the advantage of seeing exactly what those decisions are at those levels. Right. So when you see this kind of activity where I'm pointing, right, yep. uh, that huge spike, and it's so far from the T line, and I just want to make sure I understand it. Um, that's your indication to say, hey, let me see this 10 minute chart to see where I am relative to the T line to make sure it, it might be time to bail here. Right. Ex exactly. is, is that what you said? Is that, yep. is that clear? Is that accurate? Yep. Okay. Yes. I get it. Good. And the warning, uh, to go to the 10 minute chart was the fact that the daily chart was telling you you're way too far away, start looking for selling. And that's where they go into the 10 minute chart kind of uh, enhances that uh, selling uh, alert. Okay. So cool. same scenario, when you're moving too far away from the T line, that's when you start, if you were short, 
-hmm. That's when you start looking to cover your short position because where's the next likely target? At least coming back up to test the T-line. Okay. So this isn't rocket science. This is why the moving averages are on our charts because we can see graphically exactly what's going on at those, those levels. Mm -hmm. And they act like support and resistance levels. We can see more clearly when they are acting as support. And here's kind of what we call our visual uh, concept of taking advantage of what the graphics tell us. There's patterns. This is what we call a scoop pattern. Okay. Because there's your flat handle. Now you wouldn't recognize this until you start seeing this occurring. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that, when it, this might be our alert when we do a very simple scan to see which stocks or which prices had the biggest percent move during a, any time frame. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can see this happening and then we can visually see, well, there's a handle here. What do we expect coming out of this pattern? A strong price move. Mm -hmm. So again, this is not rocket science. This is saying, oops, there's maybe that's a bullish Harami telling us the selling has stopped. The buying hasn't started. Now they've done a gap up. Well, this is what we call your best friend, a doji followed by a gap up. Okay. Call it your best friend for two reasons. One, it gives you a high probability of the direction. And two, it tells you there's probably going to be a very strong direction. Right. So if we can apply that to our analysis, knowing that we have a handle, we know pretty much there's a scoop pattern. We can be buying as long as it uh, we can be buying down here. And how long do we stay long? Mm -hmm. Simple. The T-line rule is you just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Okay, got it. So um, this this T-line, I would just reemphasize, it's an eight-minute... Eight uh, exponential eight moving minute, average. Eight exponential. And eight is a... Is that, that's a Fibonacci number, I believe. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. So um, I, is that the magic of that? Or is it, there's some other little mystery that we all should, should know or should I, <laughs> We don't know what the mystery is. That's awesome. All I, all I tell people is try it for yourself. Okay, good. You'll be, you'll be surprised to see how often, how often a price will move exactly back to the T line and bounce. Okay. Now, the reason that's significant is because nobody has the T line on their charts. Right. Interesting. And and you said so. It, what if you're like uh, a day trader and you're using minute charts? Could you could you use it to scalp? Do you think, or you know, maybe it's more of a longer time horizon? What do you think? No, definitely. When I was in my younger days, yep, I would use the one minute, three minute, ten minute chart combination yep. to trade the E minis. Okay, and that worked well worked extremely well oh, I love again it. you go back to the basic uh, uh definition of a candlestick signal it's a graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame Got doesn't it. matter whether that time frame is a daily or a one minute time frame or a monthly time frame it still okay. illustrates the same thing Got so it. you can see the same thing here where was everybody watching they're watching to see what's going to happen at the 50. We can see that morning star signal mm -hmm. and a close above the T line. That told us we could be buying on positive trading because what could we expect happened here? That's where everybody started buying, giving us a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Mm -hmm. So we've got another big pattern in uh, Japanese analysis or Japanese candlestick analysis. This is called a fry pan bottom. Okay. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. And what instigates that price move? Well, there's our best friend signal, gap up. Mm -hmm. So there's two uses for the stochastics. One, if you're looking at a buy signal, you're looking for it to be in the oversold area. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a pattern breakout, it's usually gonna occur when the stochastics are in the overbought area. Okay, and that's the, is there, a, what's the number? Is there a specific number for st stochastics being overbought not, or you don't, you're not sure of that? Uh, overbought is, there's uh, two numbers on here, 80. Okay. When it comes up above 80, it's overbought. When it's below 20, it's oversold. Okay, so very similar to like an RSI, I think. So exactly. Some number. people okay. say, well, why don't you use RSI? Okay. You use whatever is indicating that you're in an overbought or oversold situation. Perfect. And if you're not sure, Throw both the stochastics and the RSI down here. It's not cluttering up your chart. It's just right. telling you the most important factor on any candlestick chart is what is the signal itself. Mm -hmm. 
So it works just as effectively on the cell side that if you see a long legged doji spinning top is what it's called mm -hmm. because the body's a little bit bigger. The Japanese rice traders have a very simple rule that if it opens lower the next day, you close it out, mm -hmm. close out your long. In this case, you had a spinning top gap down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are told don't trade the gaps. You don't know what's going on. Using candlestick signals and gaps will make you a ton of money because you know what this signal told us. Mm -hmm. There was indecision between the bulls and the bears. And when they gapped it down, we know exactly what their decision was, especially right here at the 200. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to get out of this position. Got it. So the kicker signal, again, is that strong signal where they open it here and close it here. And the next day they gap it up above the previous day's open and go the opposite direction. This is Oracle not too long ago. Right. Um, that told us we were probably in a strong uptrend. Right, okay, can, so, can you go back one? I wanna- Certainly. Yeah, I got a question here, sorry about that. This one so, or- Yeah, no, that's just, this is it. So so you, just so I'm clear, you, it opened here, closed here, right? Correct. Okay, and then it the next day it opened above, and that's a T line. I'm assuming again the black, right? Right. Yep. Okay. So what's going on here? What do you, what what's the sentiment? Are people just bailing there? What happened that caused people to really push this down? And then the next day, oh, hallelujah, I'm happy again. Is it is it is uh, it a, a it's capitulation? These, no, it's usually an announcement. Oh, people, got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, in this case, I don't know whether it was earnings. It may have been earnings, but a lot of times. Uh, people say, well, shoot, this some company just had great earnings and it started dropping like a rock. Or a company just had terrible earnings and it reversed and started skyrocketing. Well, that's an indication that the charts are telling you what the investor sentiment was. If they were saw that there was terrible earnings and it did this, that apparently meant that the investors didn't think those earnings were as bad as uh, they were expecting. They want to be yeah. buying again. Got it. So, okay. well, the one thing I learned in investing was using candlesticks, let the charts tell you what the investors are doing. Don't fight it, right? Don't fight it. Okay, great. I love it. So here's things that enhance the signals. Hmm. Again, using the 50 day moving average. This is what we call a McMuffin, which is not a uh, truly uh, Japanese terminology. Oh, dare, dare I ask wh where that came from? <laughs> because this is your morning star signal. Okay. A big down day, a day of indecision, and the third day trades positive, closing above the halfway point of this candle. That's a that's a candlestick uh, morning star signal. Okay. This is called a doji sandwich, where you had a big up day, a doji, and then we have a doji rule, which is the price will usually move in the direction of how they trade after a doji. Mm -hmm. Notice that this candle right here mm -hmm. and this candle right here are about equivalent. That's called a doji sandwich. So you got a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your morning sandwich. That's your McMuffin. Okay. Got it. So when you add all that together, this is what we call, this is a J hook pattern. Okay. They come up, they pull back right to the T line. Mm -hmm. And then they come back up again. You can see the J hook. Yep. Now we call this even a call this a bobble pattern, which is even a more defined J hook pattern. Okay. You can see it failed right smack dab at the 200. And then look where it pulled back to right smack dab to the T line. Mm -hmm. Now we would be prepared to start buying here or even buying in here or definitely buying as soon as we saw it's going to open positive because that tells us we've got a J hook pattern, more defined as a bobble pattern. And we know what will happen as soon as this starts trading positive. Everybody and their brother, they have been watching to see what it's gonna do at the 200, are gonna say, oh, it's not resistant to the 200. They start piling in. Yeah. We just happen to be able to get in there way ahead of the uh, crowd. Mm -hmm. So these are what enhance our uh, probabilities of being in the right trade at the right time and getting in early works just as well on the bearish side. This is what we call wave one, came up, kind of failed at the 200 again. Wave three will usually be the equivalent of wave one. But we could see right here that when they came up, after they went through the uh, 200, they came up and tested it, they failed. That told us we were still heading in a downtrend. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, this is not rocket science. 
you don't have to be a sophisticated technical investor. All you have to do is recognize the patterns and these patterns are created by human nature. One of the uh, more enhanced J-hook patterns is what we call the blue ice failure, mm -hmm. where they've fallen through the ice, they've come up, they couldn't find the hole, they fell through, so they drown, they go to the bottom of the pond. Got it. So we can know we can be shorting right here, knowing that that's our next target. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I can Yeah, go back one. Sorry. Um, so it, when you're down here in, in, in the sellings, or, you know, it's, it, it, we're on our way down. Is this over? That's the oversold part. That's of this. oversold. Do we get, when, is that a warning signal to you that it's might be ending at that point or not? Yes, yet? at least it's telling you the probabilities are pretty much stronger that if you're in the oversold area mm -hmm. and you're at a technical support level, you want to want to be a little bit more diligent that as Got soon it. as you start seeing a buy signal down here, that's probably a good time to cover your short position. Okay, makes sense. Got it. Great. So convergence analysis is putting multiple conver or, uh, pieces of information like a bullish engulfing signal. Mm -hmm. We know that's a major candlestick reversal signal, followed by a doji sandwich, which we know a doji sandwich results is there's gonna be more upside. Opening positive above the T-line, confirming this, telling us the T-line's not acting as resistance, and then being able to identify a handle over here. You add all that together, you know you have pretty good probabilities that you've got a scoop pattern and our expectation of a scoop pattern is October. we're probably heading much higher. Yep. Got so it. there's that doji right here at the uh, uh, at the 50-day uh, moving average. Okay. Then they gap it up the next day. So there's our bullish best friend signal right off the 50, mm -hmm. gapped up through the T line, told us the T line's probably not acting as resistance, broke this downtrend. If it's trading positive, we know we can start staying long using the T-line rule mm -hmm. that we can just stay long until we see a sell signal. That's a dark cloud and a close below the T-line. That's when we would have closed out that position. Great, good. So it also helps us identify breakout situations. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have developed recently is called research analysis, reverse engineering. Now, people always say, well, don't you ever pay attention to the fundamentals of uh, companies? And the answer is no, because everybody that's making their buying or selling decision is deciding what to do because they've researched the fundamentals and they're, they're making their decision. Now, we've changed that recently mm -hmm. because now if we see a breakout, look at our fry pan bottom, we'll go back and research what caused that breakout. And if it's something that tells us, oh, this is substantial, there's probably more upside, we got a lot more confidence to be buying. Yeah. Same situation right here. And this, we don't usually do this. And so I'm only illustrating this because this is kind of illustrates the point that that little gap up right there, I think we can to make a long story short, that was the breakout. We started buying at 73 cents mm -hmm. and we sold out at 17, 75 up in this range. But then look at what this breakout told us, mm -hmm. that there's been a major change of investor sentiment. It hadn't done anything for months. So we go back and find out that this company was approved for COVID virus uh, or vaccines in India. Oh, God. And maybe they could be approved from the United States. So buying on this breakout, listening or researching that news, says, up, oh, we got possibilities that could even go higher. Right. So I'm not pointing this out to say, yeah, we'd make great uh, profits on this one. I'm pointing this out because this puts you in situations where the probabilities are much greater that you're going to be in a high profit trade situation. Mm -hmm. And it works on all situations. Right here, we were buying because you could see it was doing a kicker signal. Mm -hmm. Did we know it was going to do this? Heck no. But again, back to that rhetorical statement. It puts us, the candlestick signals put us in situations where the probabilities are greatly in our favor. Sure. We're going to be in the right direction. So let me ask, so, you know, you can't be right 100% of the time, right? So what's, is there a stop out mechanism that you use, you know, when all this looks great, but for whatever reason, 
doesn't work. What, what's the, what's, is there a mechanism there? Yes. Okay. The, the candlestick signals tell you what's going on in investor sentiment. It tells you when it's time to buy and it tells you when it's time to sell. Okay. So if I see a candlestick buy signal, I don't see if I've got something on here. Here's another one that broke out. Now, if I had bought on this day, right, and this was the candle that told us that the uh, bulls were in control, Mm -hmm. The Japanese rice traders have a very simple philosophy. Okay. If you bought on this day and it came back and closed more than a halfway down the candle that told you the bulls were in control, and it tells you the bears are still in control, you close it out. Okay. We're always told to cut your losses short and let your profits run, but nobody ever tells you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick charts make that very easy. Okay. If it, if it's a failed signal, you close it back out and you move on to the, to another one. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Excellent. So again, this is what really everybody, if, it, if you get nothing out of this, first of all, the 12 major signals, no matter what trading strategy or trading program you're using, if you convert your charts to candlestick charts and know the 12 major signals, you're going to be able to, to enhance your analysis of whether somebody's recommendation is correct or not just by seeing what the investor sentiment is doing. The reason I've used the T-line is it does two major factors. One, it gives me high probability situations. Right. And two, if I'm in a position, a lot of people say, well, man, I'm going to take profits because I got a good profit. That's human nature. And that used to be me because I was so happy to even have a profit most of the time that I didn't want to look stupid by having a profit and letting it go back to a loss. Sure. So we would cut our losses short or leave our, usually we, back then we'd leave our losses long and, and cut our uh, profits short. Now with the T-line, even though you might see sell signals, you stay long as long as it, uh, you stay above the T-line. Got it. And this basically for me, again, being one of the worst investors in the world, just eliminated all my emotions when it came, came to trading. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's a great, great point too. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm a more on the option side and we, we dealt with similar things. Emotions was the biggest problem and we had to automate emotion out of the equation. If you, if you can believe that. Um, yep. But yeah, when you have that kind of structure, I think it's it, it's a recipe for success. That when you can take that emotion out of it, that's that's great stuff. We've got four packages using the T line um, that are very effective, and it's like an eight to nine hundred dollar package that she wants to do for four ninety seven. So, oh uh, boy, oh there's there it is right there. I see it. Uh, if if you want to. Hit that uh, link. Mm -hmm. It'll give you much more details. But I was a good trader mm -hmm. once candlesticks came around. I was making good profits. And I was just happier than a pig in doo-doo that I was making profits after being the worst trader in the world. <laughs> then when I applied the T-line, my profitability expanded all that much greater because it took my emotions out of my trading. It took my guesswork out of trading that all I had to do is stay long as long as prices stayed above the T-line. Great, great. That's awesome. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm just looking through this uh, trading. The, so these are all different programs that we're looking at T-line timing? These are, yeah, videos. Okay. Uh, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half videos on how to use the T-line in conjunction with the candlestick signals. Okay, understood. And then you said that you have, is there a, do you have a, a daily room that people could, could join up for as well or no? Uh, yes. Our, our website is www.candlestickforum.com or okay. www.stevenbigelow.com. Okay. We've got a trading room for mostly people learning how to use candlesticks effectively. Okay. We usually have a couple hundred people in there, but the nice thing is, We've got traders in there that have been using candlesticks for a while. So they're identifying the good chart patterns. Okay. So even if you don't know how to scan, which is very simple, um, you can find good trades on there. And if you don't know why it's a good trade or you want more clarification, 
it's a place where you expedite your learning by just saying, why is X, Y, Z being, mm-hmm. why do you think that's a good trade? And somebody will come back and say, well, it's got a J hook pattern setting up where it's done a best friend signal. And then we also have an options room, much smaller, but mm-hmm. over there, the terminology again is more toward the option trades. So it's not confusing people in the, uh, the uh, sure. major trading room. Okay. Now I put out two or three stock picks every day in a video format. Mm-hmm. And it's not so people have picks. It's done so that as you're looking at the video, you're seeing that, seeing the logic or seeing the rationale of why those that pick was being made. Okay, good. Um, now the the uh, the trading room itself is that is that one of these prices here or no? It's not on. I uh, know this. This is just the uh, learning packages. Mm-hmm. We have a membership to the website, uh, monthly m- membership. Okay. And along with that, about every Monday and Thursday night, we do sessions. Okay. That we go through, show what the market's doing, mm-hmm. uh, which sectors are acting well, which stocks are acting well. And it's kind of a constant review session of how to identify the signals and patterns. And then during the uh, week, maybe on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, we'll do special sessions like how to logically set your stop losses using candlesticks Mm -hmm. or entry and exit strategies that improve your probabilities of getting in or out at the appropriate time Mm -hmm. and how to scan for the best possible trades. So everything that's related to candlestick analysis, if if you don't buy a uh, video on it, We usually do it live during the week, at least once a week uh, for members. Okay, understood. One question that we have is you you, you referred to doji, candle, morning star. Is that something that you teach? I don't know what a doji is. I've heard it, but I don't know what it means. When you you show me a a picture of candle, if I had a multiple choice to pick the doji, I'm not sure I could pick it. Um, is that something you teach or should we read it, you know, research it? What's the best answer there? Uh, I've written three books on candlestick analysis. Perfect. Again, there's only 12 signals. The doji looks like a cross. It's where they open and close right at the same level. Got it. So the, the benefit that the Japanese rice traders produced for us was one showing us the graphics of what a signal looks like. Mm -hmm. So. The morning star signal was that three day pattern, a big down day, a day of indecision. And the third day it closes more than halfway up that first big down day. Sure. Uh, the evening star signal is the same way, a big up day, a day of indecision, and then the third day closes more than halfway down. Um, they're very easy to learn. Okay. And then on top of that, not only after, for hundreds of years, the Japanese rice traders identifying what was changing investor sentiment, not only did they show us the graphics of these signals, but they explained what created those signals, mm-hmm. the investor sentiment. So with that combination, once you learn candlesticks, you've got a grasp on what moves prices as much as somebody that's been trading in the market for 50 years. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the other question, I, and I think I know the answer is I'll ask it anyway. Um, it's, it, it, it sounds like you never set a profit and a stop prior to the opening trade because it just doesn't make sense if you're looking at candles i think i think that's the answer because you're not going to know you're going to know when to get out when you see the right setup for right. how to get out so, of the trade is that is that safe to say yep very simply stated if you're buying a, a, a position because of a candlestick buy signal you hold that position until you see a candlestick sell signal okay now that might be you're closing it out the next day because it didn't work Mm-hmm. Or it might be that you're closing it out a month later because it's been a, a steady uptrend above the T line until you saw a strong sell signal. Mm-hmm. So to preset your profit level has absolutely nothing to do with what the, that price of that next move is going to be. Okay. Right. You're, it sounds like you're you're fighting what what the price action in nature or, or could tell you to do. You're, 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 you're giving yourself a disadvantage under your system. It sounds like to me to do that. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Um, a couple more questions and we'll let you go. Uh, it, do you ever combine, I know you use the stochastic, we talked about RSI and you said that um, whatever shows overbought, oversold that works for you is good. 
Do you ever use other signals like MACDs and, you know, some of those other crazy, do you ever combine them to make the Steve signal at all or not, not at all? Not really. Now I, on charts where I can overlay a uh, histogram of MACD on the stochastics chart, mm -hmm. I can add it on there. I don't use it, but it just adds a little bit more fluff, uh, more confidence that that trade is working. Okay. So if I needed to, I could take everything off the charts, except the candlestick signals themselves, mm -hmm. the T line, and then the stochastics. Because the most important factor to show when there's a change of investor sentiment is the signals themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, we wouldn't be looking at them today. There's a very simple adage on Wall Street. If something doesn't work, it disappears very quickly. Right. Right. And candlesticks have been around for hundreds of years because it uses the most basic indicator that has worked well for centuries. And that's human nature. Mm -hmm. And so all it is is a graphic depiction of human nature. Sure. And, and it seems like what you described in your in, in this this presentation, um, you know, I'm always curious about are, are there breakout signals and are there reversal signals? But I think you said they're, they're essentially both. Right, yes. the way you described it. So there's there's a there's a breakout version where it's going to continue high. And there's one, oh, it's over, it stopped. We're probably going to see the the end of this run and time to get out or even get short if you're aggressive. Let's say. Yes. Yep. And there was two 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 elements there. First of all, the most important one is a sell signal, mm -hmm. like a bearish engulfing signal, obviously opposite the bullish engulfing signal. Number one or number two, if you've now started moving excessively away from the T line you get a lot more prepared to go ahead and start taking profits sure. from a sell signal on your 10 minute chart, which is confirming the sellers are starting up at those at that level. Right. So, okay. And then if, if you had, let's say you, 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 as you described that, I think it was Tesla, maybe we were looking at, and it got stretched way far away from the T line, right? Yeah. Now your mind's thinking, let me see that 10 minute chart. Let me start thinking about this. And, and, and you had a setup where if, if it closes at some point, uh, I can't remember what you said, but maybe you go to the 10 minute. Could you technically set a trigger to get out if that event happens? If you have the right software, of course. If you have the right software. Yeah. Or if you're just sitting there watching it and you say, way, this stock is way up too high, way mm -hmm. far away from the T line. Let's flip to the 10 minute chart and see what it's doing. Now, if the 10 minute chart is still moving up steadily above the T line, you stay long. But as soon as you see a sell signal and a close back below that, 10 minute chart T line, you start taking profits because it just told you they're starting to sell off the 10 minute T line or the sure. 10 minute chart. And you already knew you should be watching for selling because you were that far away on the daily chart uh, away from the T sure. line. Okay, that makes sense. All right, last one and we'll let you get going at dinner time, right? Um, I know I don't think you do you, you you do options as much, but do you have a feeling for the folks who use options what they typically do on these things? Is it is it spreads that they're doing? Is it straight buying and selling about calls and puts? Any thoughts there on what those folks might be doing with your, with these types of signals? Oh, we, no, I trade options all the time. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, good, good. Yep. So we have yeah, we keep the strategy just as simple as the analysis of the candlestick charts. Sure. Do you usually use straight puts or calls, but if it's something that is much more enhanced by a spread, we'll do, go ahead and do a, a spread or we do a combination where if we think a, we have a fry pan bottom breakout mm -hmm. that could last in a good strong uptrend, we might be buying the calls and go up the scale a little bit and do a spread where we have little money involved. But if the spread or the uh, trade works like it's supposed to, sure. it dramatically enhances those returns. Okay, good. Okay, good to know. All right. I'm going to mess around. I'm going to try to be dangerous with with this one presentation. And then I'm going to call you and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> All right, Steve, great stuff. I loved it. Um, you know what I love to, I got to tell you, you made it, you made it sound simple. I know there's a lot of 40 years of studying there. And it's not simple, but boy, it sure seems like if someone wanted to work hard at this, they could they could really do something uh, wonderful. That's, that's awesome. No, I'll restate that for you. It is simple. Good. I mean, this is all it is, is identifying the signals and patterns that the Japanese rice traders have illustrated for us for hundreds of years that show us when there's a change of investor sentiment. Awesome. So you don't need to know any technical analysis. All you need to do is 
learn the signals, and you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. Good. All right. Well, thanks for your time.